Yes, good morning everyone. Yes, so 26th uh, January and 27th January, both days uh, the Hindu newspaper, important articles will discuss together. Okay, so these are the important articles. <coughs> yes, so first of all, we will take overview of all these articles and then we will discuss them one by one in detail. So first of all, mains related articles on page number 6, editorial page of both days, you can see that on today's newspapers, page number 6, there is article talking about India-Pakistan relations. Recently, there was proposal from, let us say, religious institution of Pakistan with the Pakistan government and that proposal was forwarded by Pakistan government to Indian government regarding religious tourism or the religious visits to some of the pilgrim places in India. And uh, the tra travel they seek here through air route. This is for the first time if allowed uh, such kind of travel by uh, the religious let us say groups from both countries will happen. At present whatever the travel is happening is along the road through Vagha Attari border from Punjab. Okay, So we had covered uh, this particular news day before yesterday in the Hindu analysis. The analysis is given here from IR section international relations. Then significance of Republic Day, a very good article written on yesterday's newspaper here on page number 6. As we were celebrating the Republic Day, so significance of Republic Day, the writer Rajiv Bhargava after so many days he has written the article in the Hindu newspaper. So, we are expecting some articles. He writes very good article from polity, social, uh, society perspective, ethics perspective also. And uh, they, they are having uh, relevance to our examination. Okay. So, try to, uh, let us say, use such kind of language in essay paper also. Very good articles. Okay. So, significance of Republic Day or being a Republic country, it is, uh, let us say, explained here. Now, moving on. Here, racial profiling and relocation of Chakma and Hajong communities. There is one editorial on yesterday's newspaper on page number 6 talking about recent, let us say, directive by NHRC to the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Arunachal Pradesh government regarding action taken against allegations of racial profiling and relocation of these minority communities from the uh, particular state. So, we will find out who are these Chakmas, Hajong, uh, refugees, uh, let us say why they came into India from the erstwhile East Pakistan, their let us say ethnic aspects, why the uh, Arunachal Pradesh government is concerned, the local people are concerned. So, it is important from GS2 paper, polity as well as social justice and society part GS1 also. Also in prelims examination, there can be question talking about ethnicity of these refugees like brew refugees always in let us say news or if you are talking about these Chakmas and Hajong, they have been in news, Northeast India, ethnic diversity, we all know about this. Now how they are very much concerned about their cultural aspects, right? So the foundation batch students. Recently, we talked about the internal security part in the internal security part in Northeast India, how let us say insurgency problem increased because of let us say <coughs> their identity issue, okay, threat to their identity and culture. Now, specifically for prelims examination, you can see that spot built pelicans dying en masse in Andhra Pradesh, in one of the important bird area of Andhra Pradesh. Recently, there has been, let us say, a death of number of spot built pelicans. Spot built pelicans comes to India during winter season for, let us say, breeding purpose. They are migratory birds and they are dying because of certain, let us say, infestations. Okay, so uh, this is a cause of concern from environment, uh, let us say, uh, part of our syllabus, we should be aware about this. Spot built pelicans are dying there. Then decommissioned INS Khukri to be converted into museum. Okay, so Union Territory of Jeevan Daman 
so uh, uh, this particular ins kukri will be uh, donated to that administration which will be converted into a museum here so from miscellaneous aspect you should be aware about such kind of developments now as it was 26 january padma awards and military awards the gallantry awards they were announced by the president and uh, we should be aware about what kind of awards are given this year prelims examination there was question regarding bharat ratna and padma awards okay so many students did not let's say expect that question but simply from india year book we can attempt such kind of questions you should be aware about in general important awards in the country at least at national level important okay so yes again there will be revision we will quickly have a look at what was that mcq also okay and which are these padma awards how they are selected what is that committee selection committee when they are announced when they are given all these aspects are there then gallantry awards related to uh, peace time awards and also not peace time awards okay so simply or during war time uh, their contribution <clears throat> okay so again we will go into details of all these articles first of all india pakistan relations yes so the context here is that there was recent proposal by pakistan hindu council phc forwarded by pakistan to india to allow pilgrims of both countries to travel by air to avoid cumbersome journeys at present there is existing we can say protocol between these two countries talking about let's say exchange of or let's say movement of these pilgrims religious exchanges of mainly muslim pilgrims from pakistan and hindus and sikhs from india are governed by protocol signed in 1974 okay so although the relations are strained between two countries but still the pilgrimage is allowed it is allowed to continue and it is not considered threat to the national security in general by both countries okay this new proposal is to some extent welcome especially at the backdrop of no political di dialogue both bilateral or multilateral level for over 5 years so especially after 2016 uh, uri attack pathan court attack after that india has severed the ties with pakistan and after reorganization of jammu and kashmir pakistan has also ended all types of economic ties or trade okay so the trade between two countries has also stopped and the exchanges also stopped so this is the situation and in the backdrop of this situation this is good development also last year we have witnessed there has been let's say cease fire agreement which is successfully implemented by both countries okay so there has been very less or no cease fire violations along the loc after that particular agreement so this is also good development and now the people to people contact use this word in answer people to people contact act as a base as a foundation for the political discussions deliberations in between two countries okay so at present the political discussions dialogue is not happening but this people to people contact cultural exchanges even the cricket match between india and pakistan it acts as a cushioning it gives cushioning effect for the tensions that are existing between these two countries and therefore we should appreciate that ultimately we can say that in an atmosphere fraught with tensions such people to people initiatives can only help build some modicum of goodwill okay so simply they act as a confidence building measure or the whatever the the uh, mistrust distrust that is there between two countries it will help to bring uh, reduce that and help some kind of let's say creating confidence between these two countries okay so then we can expect that the political dialogue may happen 
simply we should understand that economic and cultural economic and cultural relations or exchanges they are we can simply say that <coughs> they should remain continue between two countries even though the political dialogue is not there because of certain tensions okay when they are continued then obviously it, it creates some kind of let's say interdependence also it creates some kind of goodwill because of cultural exchange now what is cultural aspect between india and pakistan this one okay religious pilgrimage the second you can mention about music the the bollywood cinema or let's say all these there there is always continuous cultural exchanges are happening between these two countries okay and this is the base the foundation and we all know that both countries are having uh, let's say the history common history ancestral history uh, simply we should understand that the common origin is there and therefore even across the border if you are talking about punjab so bro, bo, uh, across the border on both side the similar kind of culture is observed right so they the the commonness is there and this should be promoted through people to people contact and the recent background 2019 we should also mention about kartarpur corridor diplomacy now this has been also successful this has been also successful but yes last year because of covid 19 pandemic it was stopped but now again it is resumed right so this is good development all this shows that the cultural aspect religious aspect is being promoted by people or the religious groups civil society of both countries okay so it will give some kind of cushioning effect foundation for further political dialogue between two countries okay <clears throat> there was one question in mains examination gs2 paper ir section how cultural exchanges or people to people ties between india and pakistan help uh, strengthening the relations between two countries okay so such kind of question even if it is not directly asked indirectly you should be mentioning all these things okay yes now moving on to next why republic day is celebrated a very good article let's say uh, given here talking about the importance significance of being a republic country now we all know that <clears throat> the meaning of republic the meaning of republic is say that simply uh, literal meaning is that the head of the state is elected person the head of the state is elected person and we know that india is a republic country it is mentioned in our preamble okay our head of the state that is president is elected person and it is not monarch it is not monarch or simply we can say hereditary position okay so the concept of republic came into being as the concept against the monarchy concept against monarchy now what is monarchy simply we should understand monarchy is the hereditary position or simply one person is having the absolute authority and other people are the subjects under that authority okay so uh, this is the concept of monarch if we are talking about ancient india medieval india so all these rajas maharajas or let's say sultans they were having some kind of monarchy in the country okay all over the world monarchy was there and the modern nature of monarchy is also there like for example dictators some of the dictatorship still exist in the arab countries or middle east okay so one single person having absolute authority now what is the problem with having one person the absolute authority what is the problem we can understand that the subjects or the masses are at the mercy of the whims and fancy of one single person that single person today can donate some amount to the people or simply land to the people and tomorrow it can take back also that person uh, let's say land or whatever the resources wealth and this is how the subjects do not have any kind of opinion 
by themselves. Whatever the decisions are taken by one person only. This is simply we can call it as a monarchical rule or dictatorship or autocracy in the modern day dictatorship. Okay, and this is actually against the human rights of the people. It violates the fundamental rights or basic human rights of the people. It does not allow the people the freedom, the liberty and equality. All these aspects, the principles, they are denied to the people. Now, we know that 20th century, 19th century, 21st century, there is continuous churning going on in the society throughout the world. And we are to some extent progressed towards the modern democratic state or modern democratic societies which promote the values of democracy. Okay, so liberty, freedom, equality and these values are very much essential part of republic. Now immediately after independence, we adopted this republic nature. Okay, immediately after independence, we adopted the republic nature, but basically you should also talk about like this arguments quickly, I will explain that. The English word republic is derived from Latin word res publica, that is public thing. This means in political domain, decision making in the open and in full view of all. That means there is transparency and accountability. Simply we should understand a republic is a government by free and open discussion. The people are allowed to discuss and even criticize the laws made by the government, the decisions made by the government. The government needs to take decision in a transparent manner, open to all. It is visible to all people. This is we can say a part of republic. Now to have a republic is to have free people. This is why Mahatma Gandhi's Swaraj is an important republic idea. So free people, liberty is an essential aspect of republic. Okay, the people have the right to express their opinion. Okay, right to express opinion and that opinion can be even against the government. Whatever the decisions are taken by the government, it can be against the government also. Now, if we are talking about that republic is including all the aspects of democracy also or democratic values also, then in preamble of India, why republic as well as democratic? Both words are mentioned. So, yes, there is a fine difference. Fine difference is that in Republic, we do not understand whether all sections of society are included in that rights or we can say the rights are given to all people in an inclusive manner. We do not understand that. And therefore, it, there is possibility that the Republic may not be democratic country. Like for example, China. Now China, China is a republic country. Simply we should understand. But do we see democracy in China? Right. So many such countries are there in the world. They, have, they are republic. Even some of the newly formed African countries, they give the name their republic. Okay. But simply we should understand republic does not translate into a democratic country. So uh, the the democratic, why Indian constitution mentioned this democracy? Because the democracy makes republic inclusive. No one is excluded from citizenship. For example, Article 320, uh, sorry, Article 326, universal adult franchising. Now, immediately after independence, everyone, irrespective of caste, gender, or religion, race, the person was given right to vote. Now, this is the essential aspect of democracy. Okay, so uh, in this manner, we should understand that the rights are given irrespective of the background of the person and therefore the word democracy was added there. 
डिसीजन टेकन बाय रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द पीपल मस्ट बी प्रॉपरली डेलिब्रेटेड रिमेन ओपन टू स्क्रूटनी एंड बी पब्लिकली लीगली कॉन्टेस्टेड इवन आफ्टर दे हैव बीन मेड सो यस सिंपली वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ वी आर इलेक्टिंग आवर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव सो इट डज नॉट मीन दैट फॉर फाइव इयर्स we need to forget everything forget everything and yes the representatives will take care of all the decision making this is not republic republic should include the aware citizenship or citizenry simply all citizens should be aware about the decisions of the government and they should be able to criticize those decisions if they are not according to their will okay simply we should understand this transparency accountability and responsibility all these are aspects of we can say republic government a republic nation okay so yes these arguments can be used in essay paper also when let's say the essay paper is talking about democratic ideals democracy in the country republic there can be question or there can be essay topic okay so you should be aware about this arguments this discussion very good article i want all of you to read that article and use such kind of language in your essay paper also okay yes now moving on for a civic solidarity now what is this particular article nhrc recently directed the ministry of home affairs and the arunachal pradesh government to report or give a report on action taken against racial profiling and relocation of chakma and hajong communities in arunachal pradesh brief background about this communities let me tell you they had fled their homes in chitagong hill tracts in erst while uh, let's say eastern pakistan present day bangladesh after losing land to the construction of kaptai dam on karnafuli river in the early 1960s okay Chak chakmas are buddhist and hajongs are hindus this can be asked in the prelims examination okay chakmas are buddhist and basically one of the reason is that they are minority in the erstwhile muslim majority we can say bangladesh or uh, eastern pakistan and there were religious persecution also one of the reason is religious persecution and other reason is kaptai dam okay and they actually took refuge into india through the lushai hills in northeast india and they then thereafter government of india relocated and resettled them in three such locations of northeast frontier agency nefa the erstwhile union territory but later the uh, different states were formed and arunachal pradesh are having majority of these chakma and hajongs now in 2015 supreme court directed state to grant them citizenship but this has not yet been implemented now why it is in news arunachal pradesh uh, let's say chief minister last year in august month announced that they would be relocated outside the state and that steps would be taken for a census of those communities now this is going to result into some kind of racial profiling a census of particular community people from particular community means it may result into state sponsored persecution okay so there are concerns related to human rights violations of these communities and that's why nhrc has given this directive so what are the steps taken by the ministry of home affairs for such because these are relocated by the government itself and now the state government is what we can say forcing them to relocate somewhere outside the state okay and now when they came in india there was less population around 10000 12000 but now this community population is around 1 lakh okay and relocation of such huge 
uh, let's say population is not appropriate and now they have been living since last 40 50 years and they have some kind of good social life there even they have assimilated with local people very peacefully there are no conflicts literally like for other examples if we are talking about brew refugees there was conflict but these refugees have been assimilated in the local community peacefully they have been living peacefully and therefore there are no instances of violence or the social conflict happening in that region okay so ultimately we can say that way forward the three stakeholders central government state government and the leaders or representatives from these communities should come together sit on the table deliberate on all the issues and find the peaceful and amicable solution okay so this is the good solution this is going to be resulting into peaceful solution okay though simply we should understand special rights guaranteed in the indian constitution in these states in order to protect the tribal people their habitat and their livelihood have more than occasionally been misinterpreted as favoring tribal nativism with overblown demographic fears fanning hatred for communities we have seen that in bodo land bodo people okay so Yes, Schedule 6 of Indian Constitution, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Mizoram. So, territorial councils, autonomous territorial councils, 10 such territorial councils are one of them, Bodo territorial council. So, similar kind of conflict is there. The special provisions are misinterpreted uh, there as like whatever the provisions are there are for only those indigenous people or their welfare only. And the outsiders, the concerts like outsiders have settled there and their population or demographic fears. That means their population is exploding and they are using the local resources which are specifically for the indigenous people. This is how let's say some kind of conflict is there. Of course, there is ethnic diversity, the concerns related to culture aspects are there. But obviously, the central government should intervene and some kind of peaceful solution is required here. Okay. Yes. So, this is... Now, spot build pelicans dying en masse in Andhra Pradesh. Important bird area of Andhra Pradesh is... Yes, Teli... Teli Nili? Sorry. Teli Nila Puram. This is important bird area in Naupada swamp of Srikakulam district in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, spot-billed spot pelicans, they come to the winter for let's say uh, breeding season we can say and migratory birds. Now why they are dying? A nematode parasite infestation is happening there. It is suspected to be transferred through fish and snails in particular when the birds prey in the aqua ponds okay to kaha se ye transfer hua infestation from fish and snails okay so we should understand that nearly 200 adult spot spot billed pelicans are surviving in the habitat this is the largest habitat uh, or simply breeding habitat for the painted stork also this painted stork along with these spot billed pelicans migrate from Siberian region to breed in the important bird area of Telinila Puram. Okay. This is important for prelims examination environment section. Sir, this, uh, due, to their, due to their using the chemical purpose only it is coming now, sir. Which one? Sir, it is, uh, this infection is coming from no, no, this, yes, fishes are having this parasite. The parasite growth is increasing in that uh, swamp areas. Okay. Sir, it will be coming by natural or any chemical use, sir? No, of course, this parasite growth is happening because of some kind of nutrient enrichment only. Chemical or nutrient enrichment of that area. 
okay but the growth of this parasite which is further harmful to this okay directly it is not affecting but yes man made factors may be there okay and uh, in that manner only it is spreading directly it is not affecting indirectly it is affecting okay yes iucn status is near threaten conservation okay it is not endangered or critically endangered or vulnerable it is near threaten okay fine hmm. decommissioned ins kukri to be converted into museum okay so it is handed over to dew administration to be converted into museum now uh, you should be aware about the background that as a part of developing and revitalizing Kukri Memorial, the DO administration had approached the Defense Ministry in 2019 for gifting to it for public display the decommissioned naval vessel. Okay, so now the Navy has gifted this to DO administration and it will be converted into museum. This was INS Kukri was built by Mazgao Dock Shipbuilders and it was commissioned in Indian Navy in 1989. Now, Padma Awards General Rawat and yes, ex Chief Minister of UP. Kalyan gets uh, Padma Vibhushan. Four people who received Padma Vibhushan. Names for Padma Vibhushan are important. For Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri, it is not important because so many names will be there. Okay, UPC will not ask that question. Now, Miss Prabha Atre, field you should remember, art and Maharashtra state. Then, Shri Radhesham Khemka. Posthumously, Literature and Education, Uttar Pradesh. Then, General Bipin Rawat, Posthumously, Civil Service, Uttarakhand. And Sri Kalyan Singh, Posthumously, Public Affairs, Uttar Pradesh. Okay, so you should remember the fields and the names, Posthumous or Living. So, four names are important for Padma Vibhushan. This is highest of the Padma Award. Okay, there are four civilian awards in hierarchical manner. The highest one is Bharat Ratna, but that is not part of Padma Awards. Okay, but the second highest civilian award is Padma Vibhushan, then Padma Bhushan and then Padma Shri in hierarchical manner. Let's understand information about that. Yes, Government of India instituted two civilian awards, Bharat Ratna and Padma Vibhushan in 1954. That Padma Awards are one of the highest civilian honors announced annually on the eve of Republic Day. Okay, so every year on the Republic Day, these Padma Awards are announced. The announce, uh, let's say, are given in the three category Padma Vibhushan. For what purpose they are given? For exceptional and distinguished service. Padma Bhushan, Distinguished Service of Higher Order and Padma Shri, Distinguished Service. Okay, now Padma Awards are conferred on the recommendations made by Padma Awards Committee which is constituted by Prime Minister every year. Okay, now nomination process is open to public. Even self-nomination can be made. Even self-nomination can be made. However, the government servant, including those working with PSUs, the government servant, including those working in PSUs, except doctors and scientists, are not eligible for these awards. That means civil servants and public servants are not eligible. Okay, they are not eligible except doctors and scientists. The award is normally not conferred posthumously, however, highly deserving cases, government could consider giving award posthumously. This year, three such awards are Padma Vibhushan, posthumously. 
in general posthumously is not given but exceptions are made by the government okay then total number of awards be given in a year excluding posthumous awards and to the nris and foreigners should not be more than 120 now there is limit on giving padma awards number of padma awards excluding posthumous and those given to let's say nris it should not cross the number 120 this can be asked in the prelims examination again then the award does not amount to the title and cannot be used as a suffix or prefix to the award is name this is also important because article 18 of indian constitution abolition of titles article 18 of indian constitution abolition of titles part of right to equality right so simply we should understand that these titles should not be considered sorry con or cannot be used as a suffix or prefix to the name of the person okay now the awards are conferred by the president of india at the ceremonial function which is held at rashtrapati bhavan usually around march or april every year talking about this year this year president has approved the conferment of 128 awards padma awards in that 120th padma awards four are padma vibhushan 17 are padma bhushan and remaining are padma shri okay so four padma vibhushan 17 are padma bhushan and remaining are padma shri you need not to remember the names of others yes among them 34 of the awardees are women of the total 128 34 are women and the list also includes 10 persons from category of foreigners nris or persons of indian origin like let's say satya nadella and uh, let's say sundar pichai they have been also awarded this year okay so they will be separate we considered the 10 persons and 13 awards are posthumous awards okay posthumously means after their death okay so this award is given now this are, these are civilian awards now military awards or we can say gallantry awards six army men honored with shaur chakra for gallantry okay and even the olympic gold medalist subedar neeraj chopra was named for param vishishta seva medal param vishishta seva medal so we'll try to know which are these awards first of all basics about that what kind of gallantry awards are given or announced see the gallantry awards are classified into two categories one is gallantry in the face of enemy that is during war time during war time and in a hierarchical manner you should remember them paramveer chakra mahavir chakra and veer chakra okay paramveer chakra the highest award then mahavir chakra and veer chakra and the second category is gallantry other than the face of enemy or simply during peace time we can consider this and they are ashok chakra kirti chakra and shaurya chakra okay now let's find out some additional information post independence first three gallantry awards named paramvir chakra mahavir chakra and veer chakra were instituted on by the government of india in 1950 okay then thereafter other three gallantry awards that is ashok chakra and then we can say see pehle unke naam kya the dekh sakte hai. ashok chakra class 1 then class 2 and class 3 they were instituted in 1952 and their names were changed to ashok chakra kirti chakra shaurya chakra in 1967 pehle unko class 1 class 2 class 3 bola gaya tha in 1967 their names are changed to ashok chakra kirti chakra and shaurya chakra now these gallantry awards are announced twice in a year first on the occasion of republic day and then on the occasion of independence day 
Now, this is the difference. Padma awards only in uh, once in a year, but gallantry awards are announced twice a year. Okay, so order of precedence is Paramvir Chakra, Ashok Chakra, Mahavir Chakra, Kirti Chakra, Veer Chakra, Shaur Chakra. This is order of precedence of these awards. Okay, together all these six. Paramvir Chakra, Ashok Chakra. You can see first in both category. Paramvir Chakra, Ashok Chakra. Then Mahavir Chakra, Kirti Chakra. Second in both categories. And third, Veer Chakra, Shaur Chakra. This is the order of precedence and all gallantry awards may be awarded posthumously. Okay. Now let me show you one table which is uh, directly from we can say uh, Wikipedia but you should be aware about all these awards in the country. Just brief knowledge and you can yourself also collect some additional knowledge about all these awards. Recently, we talked about this. A civilian awards, you can see that. National awards, central award by field. And recently, we talked about Pradhan Mantri, Rashtriya, Bal Puraskar. This week, earlier this week, we talked about that. Sir, right. It's not visible. It's not visible. Yes, we can do it, sir, in the Yes, I will be reading that. Okay. okay. Ha. Pradhan Mantri Rashtriya Bal Puraskar for children. Then for women, Nari Shakti Puraskar is there. Now for police, President's Police Medal for Gallantry and Police Medal for Gallantry is there. Now for civil servants. For civil servants or bureaucrats, Prime Minister Award for Excellence in Public Administration. This is very famous among the civil servants. Okay, so when uh, let's say some of the civil servants implement uh, very innovative ideas which results into we can say efficiency in the administration and the governance such kind of award may be given. Okay, so remaining these awards are not important central government but by field yes literature Sahitya Academy Fellowship Sahitya Academy Award. This is important for prelims examination. Then cinema highest award, Dada Sahib Falke award, we all know about that. And national film awards, every year they are announced. Best actor, best director, all these best films, they are national film awards, national awards. Then we can say for sports, Major Dhan Chand Khel Ratna award, Arjuna award, Dronacharya award, right. So these are the important awards are given. In science and technology, the highest is Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar Prize. It is also important for prelims. Okay, then Kalinga Prize, Arya Bhatta Award, they are also there. Now, you can see that for medical, there is BC Roy Award. BC Roy Award. And National Disaster Management, Subhash Chandra Bose, Apda Prabhandan Puraskar. Now, for disaster management, also there is award. International Civilian Award India by the Government of India, Gandhi Peace Prize, Indira Gandhi Peace Prize, Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony. These three are very important and famous. Okay. Now, military awards just now we talked about and let's say uh, <clears throat> the Javalian Thrower, the gold medalist. He is given the award in Distinguished Service Category. You can see that in Distinguished Service Category, during peacetime, Param Vishisht Seva Medal. This is given to, uh, we can say, the gold medalist here. Okay. So, the Distinguished Service during peacetime, Param Vishisht Seva Medal, Ati Vishisht Seva Medal and Vishisht Seva Medal. And the same during the war time, Sarvottam Yuddh Seva Medal, Uttam Yuddh Seva Medal and Yuddh Seva Medal. Okay, so for distinguished service, different medals are there and the gallantry awards during war time and peace time for military personnel, we can say these are there. 
okay so simply you can go through the names at least which are these awards and their order of precedence is mentioned there and now upsc is asking such questions you can see this year how upsc asked this question 2021 prelims examination what's answer to this based on the knowledge that just now you received एक चीज आपको थोड़ा सा उसमें होगा फिर भी यू मे हैव डन एनालिसिस ऑफ द प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन आल्सो, तो उसमें आपको आंसर मिला होगा इसका यस yes? See, consider the following statements with respect to Bharat Ratna and Padma Awards. First statement: These titles under Article 18.1 of the Constitution of India, whether they are titles under Constitution of India? Huh? Just now we talked about this. They are not to be considered titles under Article 18. This is part of right to equality, no? abolition of titles the article 18 says that abolition of titles okay so these titles are not considered the titles and therefore the people given this award their names will not bear these titles as prefix or suffix okay so this is incorrect statement then padma awards which were instituted in 1954 just now we talked about that were suspended only once this is incorrect they were suspended twice when during janata government 1977 to 1980 and then in 1992 to 1995 twice they were suspended twice they were suspended okay and the third statement the number of bharat ratna award is restricted to maximum of 5 in a particular year this is also incorrect uh, incorrect statement the number is 3 maximum 3 awards bharat ratna award can be given in one particular year so that means all three statements are not correct the question itself says that not correct okay we have to find the incorrect statements so all of this 1 2 3 d is the answer right so upsc is asking factual questions also or simply we should be aware about this trivial factual information about these awards and that's why i had given that table important awards unka sara basic information kar lo okay if they can ask padma awards they will ask military awards also next year ओके सॉरी हाँ बट नॉट अवार्ड ना यस 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 मे बी मे बी इट मे हैव गिवन दैट विल नॉट बी आस यूपीएससी विल नॉट आस अबाउट दैट यस 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 मेनी एक्सेप्शन आर हैपनिंग यू शुड दैट्स वाई इट वॉज ये जो आपको फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन पूछा है सस्पेंडेड ओनली वंस so you should be aware about the history since independence jab se ye institute hua hai awards tab se kaise kaise hua hai ab tak bharat ratna kitne logo ko mila hua hai number of people the latest names last one year two years okay the field from which they belong their contribution ye sari cheeze aapko taiyari karni hai prelims ke liye okay any question
All right then. We'll stop. Thank you. Thank you, sir.